Hey guys and welcome to the first of my YouTube speed edit walkthroughs. So I'm going to be uploading these on a regular basis. So basically when I was coming up uh, editing on Photoshop for the first time and you know just getting used to it I was going to YouTube and watch so many people's different speed edits. Uh, a good little tip actually is you can slow them down so if you go into the settings you can change the speed of the video and I would slow them right down and then watch them at more of a normal pace and try and see what was going on. But what I'm going to do is I thought what if the artist who did the speed edit commentated over the top. The learning process is so much quicker than just kind of trying to work out what they're doing. So this is what I'm going to do and hopefully speed that kind of learning curve up for you. So let me just give you a little background of this image. Uh, I shot the image in York early morning at dusk time so it was very low light. I had to crank up the ISO so the image is a little bit noisy but don't matter. It kind of works for this image. Uh, I used my Platypod Max which I purchased recently and it's great for getting hard to reach angles and you can strap it to like things so you could strap it to a branch and then aim your camera down it's just really good uh, and gives you more variation than the normal uh, tripod so what I did is I put it very I put it on the floor so it meant I didn't have to kind of lay on the floor with my camera put it on the floor very close to the floor it was raining so it saved my camera from getting wet because it wasn't actually on the floor uh, I aimed it up so you could see the twin towers of the Minster and then I got my model to come in. We saw some outfits from various props what I had and some props and costume bits what he had and we put them together. And we just kind of went for that Jack the Ripper, London-y, Misty feel what you can then kind of get in movies. Obviously the English or whatever never turns out how you want it to and there was no mist. So obviously I did that in post but that makes a more exciting speed edit hopefully for you so you can learn something. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I hope you enjoy. Peace! So as I said, this is going to be an image walkthrough. So basically I'm just going to talk you through the speed of it. So here we have the image in Photoshop. And what I did first was open up into Camera Raw, bring up the shadows and pull down the highlights a little bit just to flatten the image because obviously I want it to be... Uh, I'm going to manipulate it to be nighttime. And here we are uh, going through with the pen tool. I always use the, use the pen tool when I want good cutouts and the reason for doing this cutout is because I knew I was going to make the image look like it had a shadow, uh, a more shallow depth of field than it actually did. So I'm just cutting around the model with the pen tool. Eventually I will mask him out and then blur out the background. Uh, I always use the pen tool for selections. It, you can't get better than pen tool although it does take a little bit of time to get used to and of course it's boring uh, sometimes I will just pen tool what I need to pen tool and take a little break and then come back just because the brain starts to numb a little bit so here I am there just masking out the background uh, masking out the model so what I do then is add a Gaussian blur to the background just to make it look shallow depth field as you can see I'm doing here So now just looking through the stock library at different skies, I wanted to have more of a dramatic sky in this, uh, clouds in the sky. So again, just got running through the, the stop here, keep going. So then I'm just using a bit of blend if just to uh, mask the clouds. So if you look here, I've just brought the cloud down over the top of the building and I've put the blend mode onto hard light. It's good sometimes just to, if you hold down shift and press up and down, you can see real-time uh, manipulations uh, and how the bl blend tool goes through all the different blend modes so I uh, found the best one was hard light so as you can see it's just kind of blended the tones and textures of the clouds just in straight into the sky what was already there we have a line here but I will then use the layer mask and just kind of blend that out blend it back in again and just play around until it looks somewhere half decent so now just free transforming a little bit so the clouds look a little bit better. So again just adding a, the bl same blur to the clouds. So a way to do that is, is if I blurred the background here with say like 0.8% I would then I'd be able to press Control Alt F and it would then automatically add the same uh, amount of Gaussian blur to the clouds. So that's a, a little handy trick for you just to save you some time going through all the menus. So again, adding a bit more of a blur to the background as I wanted it to be like super shallow depth of field. But also, I just wanted, still wanted some details there, so 
not just blown it out completely like some people do. So what I started to do here was obviously I was going to put some light from this lamp here uh, and if there was light coming from there he would have kind of fall out of light up his arm and he would have like light on his face so the best way how I thought I would do that would be just to add some colour into the light what's already reflected off his face. So here we go just playing around with blend modes. So obviously set up for soft light started with screen but it just didn't work right soft light kind of blended it into the tones a lot better so again using the mask what i'd already uh used before i did that by just control clicking on this layer mask here and it brought up this uh the selections around the cutouts already there so you can keep using the same cutout over and over again just to make things easier now i'm just going to start adding in the lamp light Obviously a lamp light is uh, a lot stronger in the centre than it is around the outside and it kind of fades off. So again just playing with linear dodge blend mode, screen blend mode, just building up the light gradually. Playing around, sometimes uh, you just have, have to play around a little just to get the right feel and effect. Now just trying to add some kind of glowing around the side. Again adding some more stronger light to the centre. And using screen blend modes and playing with opacity to get the glow and I do uh, I will refine this later but now painting in the fallout of the light on the arm again this time on screen blend mode using blend diff to blend it in better and just refining the mask obviously because this, this is uh, a non-destructive image you can go back into your layer masks and paint off and on and just refine things so I was just refining the mask around the church now I'm using the pen tool to create selections around the glass in the in the lamp what has no light in it. Again, uh, I was going through blend modes just to see what worked best. I think lighter color work color worked best on this, so just filled it with a with a color and then put on lighten mode just to get the kind of see through glass effect. And next, again, uh, I then go in and try add some kind of light into the. Uh, into the lamp so again just making the glass look more realistic by using layer mask and painting some of the layer off around the edges now using a linear dodge blend mode and painting in some lamp light again you don't have to be too precise with this because light falls all over the place so just just play around and see what you can do so again it needed to be stronger at the bottom as that where, that is where the oil burner would be so again now using the same mask before uh, this time I've inverted the mask so uh, I can then paint behind the the guy and then if I wanted I can then take the mask off and paint in front of it as well so what I'm going to be doing now is adding mist so as you can see here this is the mist brush and I believe I probably downloaded that from somewhere like Flern Flern has some good free brushes what they let you use and download for free uh, this is probably the atmosphere brush for which I use for mist all the time so again just choosing some pale grey colours and making sure the mask's, mask's okay and then I start painting in the mist. So it's going to look a little bit rubbish at first because it will be too strong and too white but what we do is we kind of fade it in uh, using opacity and different greys and tones and darknesses and then make sure to put it in front because it would be surrounded the guy not just behind him. Can see just painting on a on a blank painting on a blank layer like on screen so what we're doing here is obviously because you've got the mist coming up the glow from the lamp would be affecting the mist around it so the mist closest to the lamp would be would have the color of the lamp in it if you look at the uh, reference images or even if you're just walking down the street and you see a lamp when there's mist or kind of atmosphere you'll know that the you can see like the glow of the lamp in the atmosphere of the fog or mist that's around it so what I'm doing here is this mist here is normal mist but the, as you get closer I'm just painting in mist on a uh, screen blend mode with, with a yellow sampled from the lamp just so you get that haze around the lamp again just doing the same around the, the lamp that the model is holding and just putting fallout of the mist down here as well Start taking some of the contrast away from the background. 
again for two different reasons Be obviously because of the the atmosphere and the mist the background would be less contrast uh, and then using the same mask we've used multiple times now to take that effect away from our model and then I will then as we see just paint away the kind of atmosphere effect from the sky because that would still be dark because the atmosphere of the mist and the lack of contrast would fade away when we got up towards this point here. So I kind of always look at paintings and artworks because you'll see these techniques used in, in art all the time. So now what I'm doing is I'm just using a curves adjustment just to dodge and burn the image to give it that kind of painterly feel and pull out a few details as you could see them when we zoomed in. As I shot on a higher ISO, the, there's a lot of noise, but we can we can get away with it on an image like this. I hate uh, noise on images, by the way, but obviously, what can you do when you're shooting at dawn with no flash? So I've gone, gone a little bit too far on the dodge and burn on the face. The, the, the dodge looks cool, but the burn doesn't, so then I will go back and just refine that later. Adding some more atmosphere haze around the lamp, just kind of pulling it down a little bit. Now I'm messing with curves, just creating the overall tone and feel of the image. Now a gradient map for colour, so what we're going to do is, I always use a gradient map for, usually for the final colour grade, so what I do is I will... Uh, Obviously for this image I've used greens because I can greens I've seen in some movies recently they use like green tones and it looks pretty cool and murky and misty and quite mysterious so I thought I'd go for greens on this so what I do is create a gradient map, put dark green in the shadow, I leave I usually leave the highlights white and then I will create a mid-tone in the centre of the gradient map and then what I do is I'll add like a green mid-tone in and then I'll just press OK, put them over the image and then I usually pull down the opacity and just bring it in slightly until a point where I think it works. Then again, I think a neat trick for adding colour uh, and making the image look painterly is always adding a little bit of colour into the shadows. So if you've got selective colour and selective blacks, uh, I usually play around the sliders and add a little bit of colour into the into the shadows just because the old painters would never use a complete black in the shadows. They would always usually have like a bit of red in the black or something like that. And that's how you can, again, get the painterly feel in the images, as you can see here. So now just adjusting the colours. Uh, going to one of my favourite plugins, Nick Colour Effects. I actually played around with a detail extractor but because of the noise of the image, because it was shot in uh, low light conditions, I decided against it. And I think I basically just used Sharp Smarten to, to sharpen the image up a little bit. As you can see it just looked terrible. Um, yep, so I deleted that and then just went into Smart Sharpen. Uh, Smart Sharpen's uh, something new for me and I started using it a few months ago but I really like the effect you can get and the, the subtleness of the sharpening. So again just refining smart sharpen here. Pretty much a few final adjustments in Lightroom. So usually in Lightroom I have a little bit of clarity, just pull it up to around 10% maybe something like that. And then that sharpen I will always pull up the masking so if you hold down alt and pull up the masking you'll see how, what it, where it is affecting the image and then I just usually pull down the radius and pull up the sharpening and just give it some final kind of crisping crisp and sharpening in Lightroom and then a little bit of a vignette and there we are that we're done so basically this edit took around an hour it, it wasn't a massive edit obviously everything was pretty much in camera apart from the light but it just shows you how you can take an image from low light with no atmosphere or mist and just create that sense of dread and suspense. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, please feel free to comment in the comments below or hit me up on social media. Peace.